Manchester United were a joke of a club, but not anymore. Under this bold fraud, they have done absolute bits. And he's taken them from their worst points tally ever in Premier League history up to third, retaining Champions League football, bringing in some absolute ballers and completely changing the feel of the club. Today, we're going to discuss exactly what United need to do to potentially win the Premier League next season. But first, if you are a Man United fan, comment down below your expectations for next season and also what you think of my opinions in this video. So today, we are joined by Man United fan and a good friend of mine, Tom, aka Nerdfire. Hello, mate. How are we doing? I'm good. How are you, mate? Long time no see. I am good. Yes, I'm excited. Well, excited, but I might get a bit tasty here, mate. Talking about some of the stuff with United. We'll see how it goes. It's an interesting club, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, to say the least. So firstly, we'll just do a quick keep or sell because you've released a lot of players I've seen as well. Yeah, there's a fair few players that have just contracts have just not been renewed and they're going on their merry way, mate. So and there's also lots of players that you looking at getting rid of anyway as well yeah definitely because i'm looking at this squad now it is very large for what it is a lot of players have come back from loan that's the thing as well so quite a few of them man united keep or sell firstly david de gea oh that's actually you know what this is the hardest place to start i can't lie obviously it's the most logical place to start because it's a goalkeeper um god uh, sell sell fair enough tom heaton yeah i'd keep tom heaton because if we get rid of the hair we need at least some other keeper for now until we buy another keeper i mean i don't, I don't think it will start but as backup like he's he's, he's all right just he's just there for homegrown quota isn't he well also yeah homegrown yeah yeah uh, that's what i can say yeah so what you're saying about the hair sorry i think it, we don't even we can't even sell it he'd be going on a free anyways if we don't renew his contract so oh is his contract up yeah i'm pretty sure it'd be a free i'm 90 percent sure dean henderson so, so that's interesting actually because De Gea's contracts up. Dean Henderson, you're getting rid of obviously the, to Forest or Wolves or wherever he goes to Sheffield United, maybe. Tom Heaton's also wanted by some Championship clubs, so you could potentially go into next season with zero keepers. Yeah, it's not looking good at the moment, is it? I want Onana. That's if I had a choice of keep. Oh, I, I should say about that later, but Onana would be the choice for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, we're on to defenders now. Victor Lindelof, keep. Eric Bailly, sell. Bill Jones has gone. Harry Maguire, sell. Lissandro Martin. Martinez. Keep. Tyrell Malassia. Keep. Rafael Varane. Keep. Diego Dallo. Keep. Luke Shaw. Definitely keep. Alex Tellez. Sell. Sell. Interesting. Aaron Wambasaka. Keep. Brandon Williams. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's probably a sell. I can't lie. Like, I don't know. He's... It was psychopath, bro. <laughs> yeah, that guy was not happy in the Champions League final. I'll tell you that one for free. Ted and Mengi. Uh... He's still quite young, I want to say. You can loan. We'll say loan. Yeah, probably. Yeah, we'll go loan there, probably. Get me.
So for Ten Hag to come back, bounce back, get a trophy, like you say, like a trophy is big in his first season as well, and then also qualify for the Champions League. I th I'd say it's definitely successful, really, especially of how we started with the first two games. It was not looking great, was it, really? So obviously you mentioned Ten Hag there. Thoughts on Ten Hag's first season and also kind of how he's adapted to the, the Premier League? I think a um, very good season. I mean, in terms of overall, yeah, I think he's done really well. Uh, our away record definitely needs working on though. Like, our, our away record, we've been terrible from home, away from home. So yeah, it's shocking. Like It's something like we conceded nine or 10 goals at Old Trafford all season and then it's like 30 odd away. It's something ridiculous. Like, But obviously it's not just down to him, it's down to the players in terms of that as well. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Like still, obviously, like I said, bouncing off the last season, I've been absolutely terrible. And then coming back to this it's just uh it's just gonna take time isn't it with, especially with the new manager new regime new philosophy I, I i like his philosophy i like the way he's trying to really push obviously it's, it's still hard for him to push his way of football because i feel like a lot of the time at ajax he was more like possession based and we don't we didn't have much possession this season realistically yeah we we, we counter attacking didn't hold much of the ball it probably didn't help in terms of i feel like we need to bolster in the midfield to really uh, control games and stuff so i'd say yeah i, I like i definitely really like him at the moment the biggest thing that i've noticed this season the players that you've brought in are say mentality monsters they are you look at Leecher, you look at um casemiro those players win even the likes of like malassia malassia's always like he fights and they seem to play for the badge rather than united of previous where they're kind of it felt like they were kind of just there playing for the paycheck and and stuff like that but this season there's kind of like a feel-good factor i think around united definitely it definitely picked up especially after when we got that result against liverpool we went up from there really at home that was when it really started to pick forward so ideal transfer window right you've got three positions to fill first team what three positions are you going for striker definitely that's number one no matter what for me um i've then got to say number two because i've said sell the hair i think has to be keeper because obviously if you're going to get rid of him you have to then get a good a top class keeper in and then position three i would go with a um, central midfielder so i'm um, i know you don't have any young up-and-coming goalkeepers apart from maybe nathan bishop but he's not great we do have another one oh. Cover? I don't know how you pronounce his name. I think he got the most clean sheets though in, in his, the league that he's on loan. I remember, not, it wasn't like a major. But it's, it's like Matej Ko Kovar. So I don't know how you pronounce it. Matej Kovar, yeah? Yeah. No. But yeah, uh, yeah, definitely not ready to like come into stuff. Youngsters that could potentially break through then. You Obviously, you said Diallo loan. I, I'm a little bit... I think he should start, if I'm being honest. It's just the, it's just the winger situation. Like, we've got, I, I don't think he'll start. I don't think Tanak will start with Anthony. Um, he probably would get in ahead of Sancho unless Sancho comes off of like preseason incredible you know what I hope he goes on the tour that will be the real telltale like I feel like if he gets taken on the tour and he impresses then definitely give him like put him into the starting 11 if, if he's ahead of them too in a sense but it's a weird one it is a weird one because like it's, it's just one of them situations if he's not gonna if, if Tenag's actually not gonna play him though that's what I'm saying like I'd keep him if he's gonna play him definitely put him in why not but if he's not gonna play him loan him out for sure like give him that game time that constant game time especially at like Premier League level or maybe I don't know but I'd, I'd rather it be Premier League in my opinion i think it's just it's, it would be better for him it's good adaption for when he eventually does get it i mean personally obviously i'm a big avid watcher of like the efl and stuff he's been by far the best player in the championship like by far he's just he looks like a 25 million pound player because at the end of the day he is a 25 million pound player and to be honest i'm a little bit surprised that you said to loan diallo out but then again it depends how we impresses in pre-season and stuff doesn't it really yeah that's what it comes down to he's got to do it in the within the team and in, in uh, like Ten Hag's way of playing obviously like he's been doing he, or, like, he's done really well for Sunderland but like as long as he can fit in the way that Ten Hag wants him to I, I could definitely see him getting him but it just comes down to that in my opinion I mean if you have him and Garnacho on the wings you're set for 10-15 years that's the thing but even though like, Anthony's still young like Sancho's still young Rashford's getting on a bit so we still got like we've got a lot in the wing and the winger sorry like area I feel like which is good so Obviously, also, you mentioned a centre midfielder as, like, one of the positions you'd think. And we kind of touched upon Hannibal. I think Hannibal could kind of break through. It depends what centre midfielder you want, though. I feel like we need... So, Casemiro is obviously the out-and-out -out defensive midfielder. We then got Bruno a bit further forward, more in the attack than the midfield in a way. But you just need that person to be, like, the box-to-box. -box. Can do a bit of both, really. That's what I think. Like, um, like Frankie Dion would have been perfect. Do you know what I mean? Like, someone like that. But, yeah, that's... A bit... uh, to be fair, I haven't seen him much this season. I've seen him when he's come on for United a few times when he wasn't on loan. Um, I, I remember the Liverpool game when he uh, <laughs> went for a few snaps. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Uh, definitely him or Kobe, Kobe Maynard. 
Bruno could definitely get a shot of breaking through the season in, in that midfield role for sure. Your ideal transfer window, right? You can obviously you've said who you would sell. Roughly, if all of that happened, how much transfer funds do you think you could sell? Ray, sorry. It depends when we get bought. When we get bought, really, that's gonna that's really gonna probably dictate the transfer window. If we get bought, you never know why not it'll happen, but that's gonna really dictate how this transfer window goes. The thing is, it's coming at the worst time because the Glazers, if they're selling, they're not gonna invest any more money because they know that they're selling up. They don't want to spend any. But if it's and it, you know if it starts to drag on a little bit throughout the window, you might actually end up with zero signings. Exactly. You might get to like the weekend of deadline day and you've got zero signings because it's kind of just dragging a lot. Um, and it's between is it Jim Ratcliffe and Qatar? Is it? So Sir Jim Ratcliffe is apparently within within his offer is keeping the Glazers in at a twenty percent stake. So never never that's just not a thing. Like as a United fan, you just don't want that at all. I take anything over that. So um, definitely I definitely go for the Qatar inside. Ideal candidates to fill those positions. So obviously you've got keeper, strikers, midfielders. I think you're pretty set on fullbacks. Wingers, you're pretty set on. Who would you kind of get in there? But my first choice keeper is probably Onana, especially after watching the Champions League final uh, the other day. I just, I just like, I just love how composed he was on the ball. I'm honest, like he just, he just looked like he, it was incredible, wasn't it? Like he just didn't look like. If you watched that game and you didn't know it was a Champions League final, you thought it'd be a friendly or something. The way he's on that ball, composure was ridiculous. An interesting thing though with Onana is, I'm 99% sure he fell out with the people at Ajax last last season. So obviously he went under that ban and then he didn't come back. It's a bit, bit of a weird one, that. I don't I don't really get it. There must be a reason why that he's not been bought already. I don't know what it is, but no, yeah. I mean, I think I saw his link with him not too long ago. I mean, I guess if, if he's good, why not? Why would you pass up on the free? So that's the only thing. Like, I feel like there must be something that people are seeing. Once again, not I've not really watched him again. It's the only reason I, like, yeah, I've only really seen more Premier League kind of strikes. I mean, like, an Ivan Tony could have been an option in a sense, but obviously not now. Um, and people like that, I don't know. You got that uh, Kolo 
Sonny as well. I know he's been touted about everywhere. Yeah, hear a lot of good stuff about him as well. So that, uh, once again, I think he's, I think they want a fair decent amount as well. I don't think it's like stupid levels, but I think it's like 50, 60. And uh, Hoyland, Hoyland's the one we're, we're really linked to right now. Uh, Rasmus Hoyland, never seen a play. I can't, I can't comment too much. And yeah, I, I've, I've, I've watched him twice, right? I, I, yeah, he's good, but I don't think he's worth, I've seen the, the numbers that are being flung about. 70 to 80 million or something, isn't it? Something ridiculous. I, that's just stupid. Like 50 million should, should get a player like that. It's literally just because he sounds like Haaland and he's also Danish. It's, like, it's literally what it is. That's the only reason I can think that, it, and it's United calling. That's the only reason I can think the price tag's so high. Yeah, that's the thing. The price the price goes up 20% when United call. That's just how it works as well. Because it like it's also a little bit of break, breaking news. Um, Rashford looks set to sign a new contract, £375,000 a week. I mean, he's basically switching contracts with the hay of the hair styles. This days, because I think the hair will go down to about 200 with uh, Rashford was on. Rashford will then go to the 375k that the hay was pretty much on. I think the hay, yeah, the hay was on 375. Sancho's on 350. What? Sancho's on 350k? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't look into our wage structure. It's just terrible. I'm, I'm actually gobsmacked at Jaden Sancho on 350k a week. I mean, did you know how much Haaland is on as well, supposedly? Five six hundred k a week. Holland. He got eight hundred sixty five k in the end. I think it was or something like that. I'm, I'm actually gobsmacked that that Jaden Sancho, who's like missed half of last season for like no one really knows why he missed it. And he's on like three hundred and fifty k. It's ridiculous. Three hundred fifty k of Sancho. Yeah. Obviously, there's lots of ifs and buts with United right now. Obviously, does the takeover go through? If it does, how much can you spend? And all of the, all of that jazz kind of goes through. Where what? Obviously, the goal should be to win the Prem, win the quadruple, whatever. But realistically, what? What do you see happening again next year? Do you see top four? Or do you see maybe slipping down a little bit? I'd like to see us challenge a bit more in terms of like, I don't think, no, I don't see us winning the league. I'd be, if we win the league, I'd be very shocked. I just think City are just way too far in front at the moment. Um, I mean, there was, a, there was a point where you were like five points off with like 10 games to go. You just kind of, you just kind of, tailed off then but like you you did challenge i th i was actually quite surprised by united this year yeah i mean i'd, I'd like to push and challenge the, the people that are going for the title in terms of like city probably maybe arsenal again i don't know it'd be interesting to see if they can do as well as they did this season obviously liverpool making the rebuild uh you know at chelsea with pochettino coming in it's going to be an interesting one it really next season definitely is going to be very interesting and i'd like to see us push through the champions league get to at least a quarter final maybe a semi-final you know try and push through that um maybe uh, get one of the fa Cups or the Carabao Cup again would be cool. Uh, definitely to get another trophy in, in the locker, but yeah, be not. I don't think we'll be ready to fully, fully like competitively really push for the title next season. Um, I think we need a couple more transfer windows, some players going out, get rid of some players and some players coming in. And I think, yeah, like I, I want to be solidly in the top four this like by with a few weeks to go, like a fair few weeks to go, I think this season. Yeah, no, it does, it does make sense. Anyway, so I think, I think that's pretty much done. I want to say thank you for coming on. Really do appreciate it. His Tom's links will be down below. Um, Go check him out and all that stuff. With FIFA, are you still FIFA? Sadly. <laughs> no, not sadly. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I am still on the FIFA, on the FIFA wave right now. Anyway, boys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Peace.